Hi, and welcome to another episode of Playful Strategy Weekly. I'm Willem Vanderhorst, a brand and marketing strategist, specialized in everything to do with play. And as you well know, in these episodes, we're looking at all sorts of different stuff related to play and the books that I study and uh, all the kind of ideas that I get to make into what I call Playful Strategy. And the last episode, we went over a little bit of an overview of a uh, man playing games, Les Jeux et les Hommes, of sociologist Roger Caillois. And in this episode, we're going to start attacking the classification of games. So as he goes in the book, there's a lot of different types of play and different types of games. So he starts going into inquire into how is he going to organize it all. And the first broad spectrum structure that he puts it against uh, has got uh, two opposite ends. And on one end of this spectrum, on which we're going to place, he's going to place all the different kinds of classifications of games on a, on a grid that is actually in the book uh, is everything that is to do with a completely improvised, completely free, uh, fantasy-driven, uh, uncontrolled joy even. Like, it's even, I, 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 the way I read it is chaos. So everything to do with play that is more of a chaotic nature. Uh, completely free, spontaneous, um, leisurely, uncontrolled, unruled, un just structured, all of that kind of stuff. So kind of like on the chaos side of things, and he calls that paideia. And paideia is, as I said, everything to do with that, those kinds of ideas, right? Um, and because I had a cons in the last video about my games, I thought I'd start illustrating things a little bit with games, not only ads not only brands and right now with a very broad spectrum so it's a little bit difficult to place a brand or a specific i mean i could play a place a specific ad but on the game side of things we're talking about something that is closer to that side of the spectrum something like cards against humanity cards against humanity if ever you don't know is a party game for horrible people uh and the principle is very simple and it's like there's barely any rules there's barely any competition there's barely any counting points the whole idea is there's silly phrases and words that are placed on cards and uh, players have to associate words with empty blank spaces inside of questions or sentences to make the most outrageous, silly, funny phrases possible with a group of people that you're with. It works particularly well at the end of a dinner or, uh, you know, you're hanging out with friends and there's a lot of laughs. It works very well with having drinks. It works very well as something very casual that is just a an engine to the conversation and to the fun that you may have, uh, that you may keep having. And uh, I've had a lot of fun playing this game and I like those kinds of games, but you have to be in the right kind of mood and the right kind of atmosphere. Another similar one is uh, Joking Hazard by Cyanide and Happiness. Uh, offensive card game, if you know the comic, the comic strip, it's very offensive and very, very uh, dry and dark humor. And uh, in this one, you, it's the same principle as uh, Cards Against Humanity, except that you have these all the, on all the cards, there's drawings, and you're trying to make a three, uh, a three, a three image comic strip, basically. And to mix things up and not use ads every time, I thought I would use a movie, and actually two Disney movies. So we're going to do one in this video and one in the next video. Uh, and uh, so it's it's keeping it family friendly as opposed to Joking Hazard and Cards Against Humanity, which is typically not family friendly. Although Cards Against Humanity just re just released a family friendly edition. Uh, and one movie from Disney that is closer to the Pydia side of things, and certainly the original works, uh, and I thought the, the Disney cartoon from 1951 or 52, I think, uh, was better than the most recent release in 2010 with Johnny Depp, and I mean by that Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland and Lewis Carl's original, really, if you want to go back to the original work, really, it's even better to go back to the book. It's, it's a fantastic book. That is way closer to the Pydia spectrum of things. So it's chaos. There's no rules. It's complete fantasy. It's this dream world. It's wonder. You don't know where things are placed. And you don't know how things work. So that's a really good illustration of far on the spectrum of Pydia. And next week, we're going to illustrate what is on the other side, so what is completely structured, and that's what uh, the author calls ludus in the game. So tune in next week for another episode. Don't forget to like, comment, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see new videos. Don't hesitate asking any questions, and I'll see you around next week. Thanks. Bye.